Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. The message I have for you today is not your typical Christmas message. The message I have for you today is something that, um, that God has spoken to me, and, uh, and I want to share it with you. Now, if you were here last night, well, guess what? You get to hear it again. Only I'm going to add a little, a little bit more to the message. But I think this is the perfect season to hear this message right now. It's the perfect season. And I want you to understand that, you know what? When you think about the story of Christmas, we think all the beautiful things that we experience here, great music, great worship, great message, and ooh, Jesus, our wonderful Savior, he's a cool baby, you know, and, and all these amazing things. But let me tell you something. It was far that kind of story. As a matter of fact, the story of Christmas was really a story of spiritual warfare. It was the most darkest time on Christmas that literally hovered the earth. People were full of oppression. People were disappointed. People were disillusioned. People were disconnected. People were hurting. People were broken. There was hopelessness in the eyes of people. There was pain in the lives of people. And you know what? That's no different like today. Today we see, even right now, this day, there are people that are hurting, broken, that are far away from God. And I want us to understand, especially to those who really understand the true meaning of Christmas, that there is such thing as a warfare. You see, once God promised this plan, which was a redemptive plan, to redeem us of all our sins, to save us from ourselves and from the works of the enemy. You always have to realize and understand that with a promise comes a battle. You can't even have a victory unless you have battled something. And so when you hear today's story of Christmas and you hear the story of Mary and Joseph, you know what? I know when you read the Bible, it's like, wow, isn't that cute? Mary carried the son of God no it was beyond just Mary carrying the son of God it was Mary and Joseph went through so much spiritual warfare in order to give birth to the promise that God had for this earth and they they had to be obedient and and willing and ready at any cost to give birth to every single promise that God had for us you see if it wasn't for Mary and Joseph obeying one single promise that God gave, I don't think any of us would be sitting here today. And that goes for you too. There's something that God has placed in you that God needs to birth out of you. Because as you birth that out, it's going to bless people beyond you. And so I want you to read with me the, just the beginning of the story. This is how it starts off. When God gives someone a mission, when God gives someone an assignment, when you were born to do something amazing, like you all have been born to do something incredible for God, it's not just to work, eat, and live. It's beyond that. You have a purpose and a plan. God has designed you strategically and has placed amazing gifts on the inside of you for a greater purpose than what you're just living now. That goes for all of us. Even me, though I'm a pastor, yes, I, I'm pastoring a church, but there's so much more that's inside of me that has yet to come out. Amen? So much more to do, so much more to fulfill, so many more lives to impact, so many lives to change, right? That goes for all of you. You're not finished. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not through. Matthew 1 verse 23 says this. It says, and the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him what? Emmanuel. Let's all say that together. Say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And that means what? God with us. How many know that in the midst of whatever spiritual warfare you may be going through, God is with us? So it is. The Christmas story is a story of spiritual warfare, but it's also a message of, but do not be afraid. You see, the first thing that, that the angel told Mary was, you will conceive a child, and he will be the savior of this world, and you will call his name Jesus, right? And so those were all promises. And then Mary freaked out a little bit. And the angel said, but do not be afraid. For I am with you. 
And so when God places something in your heart, you have to be reminded that God is with me. God is with you. And how do I know when you're under spiritual warfare? Like in this season, like, you know what, Pastor? Okay, I, I, I hear what you're saying. So you're saying Joseph and Mary were going through some warfare. Yes. It wasn't just like, oh, great, that's awesome. Okay, let's go give birth to this child. No. Can you imagine the, 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 the thoughts that this 14-year-old little Mary had? 14 years old. And God has given her a great assignment. 14 years old. And she's pregnant and she's engaged to Joseph who she has to now go to him and say, hey, Joseph, guess what? I'm pregnant, but it's not your child. And he says, what? Yeah, it's the Holy Spirit. The angel said that I would conceive a child and his name will be Jesus and he'll be the savior of the world. Joseph also had to make a decision to believe what Mary said. But then the angel also met Joseph and said, hey, Joseph, everything she says is exactly what the father's doing. Can you think about this? If you were a woman and you were found pregnant, and, 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 and you weren't married, and you had child out of wedlock, you know what your sentence would be? You'd be stoned to death. So think, it wasn't just like, Mary, you're having the Son of God. No, it was, Mary, you're having the Son of God, and all hell is going to come against you. And so now she's carrying this child, and she's now having to run for her life. Think about it. She's leaving her home. She's leaving her family. She's leaving her comfort. She's leaving the place that she calls rest which is her house. And now her and Joseph are on the run because you know what? Not only are Pharisees and lawmakers looking for them to take them out because of what they've learned and heard about, but now you have this enemy, this devil that you can't see. You see, your battle, your spiritual battle, your warfare, it's not always the people that you're pointing the finger to. It's so much deeper. That's a whole other message. In fact, it is just the opposite. Look what, look what Paul says. He said, I learned this from Mary and Joseph. He says, my weapons have the power of God to destroy the camps of the enemy. You see, Mary and Joseph understood that as they were in their journey, and every single time they had to sta stop and camp somewhere. Can you imagine? I mean, Emmanuel, he, he, the angel tells Mary, and his name is Emmanuel, God with you. Think about it. And he destroys the camps of the enemy. In every camp that they camped out, an angel of the Lord would show up in the middle of the night over and over and over again and say, Mary, get up. You got to go now. Uh, they're coming for you. And can you imagine how exhausted, how fatigued, how tired? I mean, think about it. You're talking about a, a pregnant woman. Ladies that have been pregnant. How are you when you're pregnant? Exactly. And listen, and she's on the run. She's running for her life. And the angel's saying, get up, Mary, get up. It's time to go. But I just got here. I'm exhausted. I'm fatigued. We've been walking. Mary, get up. Get up. And she wakes up and then wakes up Joseph. Joseph, get up. The angel said, we have to go again. Can you imagine at the midnight hours walking through the desert? But God is with us. Tired, exhausted fatigued, weary, spiritually drained, empty. Have you ever felt empty? <laughs> yeah, that's spiritual warfare. When you feel drained and you just feel like, ah, I can't. You're right, you can't, but he can. Because Emmanuel is with us. Emmanuel. And so he says, I destroy every claim. What claim have you said about yourself? Or what claim are you making about your God? I destroy every claim and every reason that keeps people from knowing God. I keep every thought under what? Control. I keep every thought under what? Do you know that the battlefield will always start in your mind? That's where it's going to start. It starts with the mind. And so Paul is saying, hey, listen, uh, Mauricio... Uh, CJ, Betty, let me tell you something. I, I live also in the world. I, I, I get what you're going through. I get what you're experiencing. But here's the reality. I also struggle with thoughts. I also struggle with pain. 
I also struggle with wanting to give up and quit. I also struggle with, with torment. But let me tell you something. I keep every thought under control in order to make it obey Christ. And so in other words, what I learned from Joseph and Mary is that they learned to punish disobedience by in the midst of being tired and weary and exhausted, they bring their obedience to Christ. And so I get it. Maybe right now you're at a place where it's like the nightmare before Christmas. Maybe this year has been just hectic, crazy. Things happened. You're like, man, no, it's not the nightmare before Christmas, man, because this nightmare started like eight months ago. You see, this was a season that was so dark that it was almost like a scary Christmas for Mary and Joseph. But God turned around their scary Christmas into a merry Christmas. That's what God wants to do with us. It was a very dark moment. And dark times are scary. But God said, but my son has been given for redemption to turn things around and to bring Mary back in the heart of every single person. I love this. Look at Matthew. Look how scary this was. Look at this. Matthew 2, verse 16 through 18 says, it said, Herod was furious. Now watch you. Watch this. So they're running for their life, right? Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. It's like, duh. Didn't you know there were wise men? This is like so goofy, huh? The wise men have outwitted me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why they're called wise. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem and were two year, uh, who were two years old and under based on the wise men's reports of the star's first appearance. And so can you imagine how dark this is? That's like having every boy two years old and under in the entire Santa Clarita Valley being martyred by some crazy psycho on Christmas. That's pretty scary. I mean, just think about how dark this moment must have been on Christmas. How lonely, how empty, how hopeless. I, I'm sure that the struggle was real for them as it is for us. And, and look what happens. And so Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had already spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. says, a cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted for they are dead. Have you ever felt? A moment in your life where you have been at the peak of your pain, at the peak of your hurt, at the peak of your spiritual warfare, that you refuse to be comforted by God. You refuse to seek God. You refuse to get help. Have you ever been at that peak? When you just feel like, ah, I don't want anything anymore. I'm done. But that's where people were in this season. Because sometimes the pain is way too much to bear. Well, Mary and Joseph had to carry this pain. Not the child, but the pain that came with the promise. And it was warfare. Come on, the pain of uncertainty. The pain of discomfort. The pain of the lies that the enemy was bringing to them, saying, you're going to die. And as I began to think about all the, the comfort that they have left, can you imagine how sleepy they probably were? They probably had sleepless nights. Not having a, a pillow to rest their head on. Not eating properly. Who knows? Mary probably didn't eat very well. All because they were willing to sacrifice and pay the price to carry the promise of the Father. Emmanuel, God with us. You see, the war against you is not directly at you. Because you know what? Uh, the enemy, the Satan, he can care less about you. You know what he cares about? He cares about what's in you. See, you and me, we're nobodies to him. But he knows there's something in you that God already placed. And he's worried and concerned that if you were to fulfill that promise 
you would really jack up his plans. And I'm sure of it. And so I could think about how Mary and Joseph, hey, listen, they're human. I'm thinking, man, you know what? Uh, okay, I'm a man of faith, but man, I got moments where I feel like I, there's, there's some times in the year I don't even want to come to church on Sunday. But I still got to show up. No one's coming. <laughs> I don't have a choice. Well, I do, but I choose to show up. Everyone's like, okay. <laughs> well, I'm sure Mary was at a place where she was just tired now. But look what happens. I love this. Luke 2. I'm almost finished. Look at this. Luke chapter 2. You guys enjoying this? Okay, look at this. Luke chapter 2, verse 15 and 19. Quickly. I love the first verse in verse 15. It says, and the angels left and went into heaven. You know what that tells me? That in the midst of all your trouble, that angels are assigned to you. I mean, all throughout the way. Now, now the angels are done with all the work. The child is born. And the angels are like, all right, man, mission accomplished. See y'all later. And they go back home. Heaven. So that tells me that my help comes from where? Heaven. I mean, if there's an assignment in you... God needs to make sure that the package gets delivered. And so they go back to heaven. Angel said, okay, we, our job is done. We got her here safely. The child is born. And then the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Look at this. You know what's awesome is that God will not only tell you your story, but God will tell others about your story and will encourage you, empower you. So the shepherds show up at the perfect time. The shepherds show up at the perfect time, and here they have these shepherds are sharing with each other. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby, and the baby was lying in a manger. And after the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. They reported what the angel had said about this child. And all who heard it were amazed. But here's what really gets me at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, everybody say, but Mary. But look at this. But Mary kept all these things like a secret treasure in her heart. So she heard everything. Can you imagine at that moment of being tired, someone reminded her of everything God said about her? She must have been there talking about me. And she thought about them over and over and over. And I love that verse. And she thought about them over and over and over and over again as the shepherd told the story. She was reminded, wait a minute. I can't quit. You see, because it wasn't just give birth to this promise of redemption. Think about it. Mary needed to be reminded that there was much more to be done. Yes, he's a baby now, but then he'll become a child. Then he'll be a teen. Then he'll be a young adult. And then he'll be Jesus. Jesus who was crucified for our sins. Come on, she's still a mom. She's still having to see her son crucified. Then her son being placed in a grave. Huh? at his burial she's still a mom having to see her son gone but on the third day once again the promise that the king would rise again and there was resurrection power and so i think about mary i bet she forgot everything god said have you ever forgotten what god said about you i mean as i'm studying this i start i start thinking how soon we forget how soon how quick we forget, but today, Christmas, is a day to remind us. And as I was sitting at my kitchen table, I did. I started just writing. I, I'm a doodler. I like You guys doodle? I doodle. If you look at my notebooks, they're like crazy weird. I have papers everywhere. But I doodle, and I started writing some things to myself. I said, Mauricio, has God poured out his grace when you deserved his wrath? Yes or no? I'm like, yes. Yes, he has. And then I said to myself, okay, Mauricio, has he shown you mercy when you deserved his judgment? Yeah. Uh, Mauricio, uh, did he make a way when there was no way? Yes or no, Mauricio? And I started thinking about myself. I'm like, yeah, I remember when the warfare was on to take me out with cancer. I remember being in that hospital bed. I can still see my doctor's face walking in, shaking his head. There's nothing else we can do. The answer was no, 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 no. But my God said, where there is no way, I make a way. 
You see, God did not send his son just for the means or for the sake of him saying, I'm God and I can send whoever I want and I need to display my son. No, he sent his son to show you and me what could be possible through him. Then I thought, Mauricio, have you ever felt that you weren't enough, but God was more than enough? Even when you weren't feeling it, you just felt like, no good. You felt like just trash. You know what keeps you away from God? Shame. Shame will keep you from entering the presence of God. Shame will keep you from healing, from restoration. Shame comes to eat you up. But Jesus came to destroy every single work of the devil. And that includes shame guilt and condemnation Matthew 1 21 says this and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins do you know that Jesus lives up to his name aren't you glad that he lives up to his we may not always live up to ours but Jesus remains the same and he saves us he saves us this is the season where God is saving us He's saving us. I want you to think about this. You know what? When you think about Christmas, you think, well, isn't that awesome? Like, this is the month where I gave my life to Jesus 20 years ago. It was a, like a few days before Christmas I gave my life to Christ. It's been 20 years. I know I look 20, but it's been 20 years. 20 years. And you know what? It would be easier to say, yeah, you know what? I... I chose Jesus, but let me tell you something. God chose us. We didn't come to him. He came to us. And you know what? When his son was born, we're talking about God who he, he is royal to. He has a kingdom. He could have, he could have uh, had his son be born in a palace that reflected what his kingdom looked like. Streets of gold, walls of jasper. I mean, he could have had him born in, in an awesome kingdom here on earth. But you know what? God was so awesome and so loving towards us that he said, I'm going to allow my child to be born in a manger because you know what? I want everyone to have access to him. Because if he was in any palace, guess what? You and I, we aren't worthy to walk into a palace. You got to be someone special. Well, God says, you know what? I am special to you. And what's even more trippy is that his son, Jesus, is born in this manger. This is, and he didn't have a crib. He's got a trough where the animals come and they drink their water from. That was his crib. And Jesus is right here in this manger, and, and we have access to him, and everyone's coming to worship him. And then I started thinking, can you imagine the first cry of Jesus? As you guys go home to see family today, you may have some little rugrats, right, and your little ankle biters that are going to be crying. I was at the mall this week shopping, and I walked in this one store, and this little girl cried her lungs out. I was like, what the? I mean, it was, like, annoying. Just this little girl wanted everything. And, no, and the mom, and parents, come on, be a parent. She said, oh, sweetie, it's okay. I look. I'm like, man, if that was my little girl, oh, I just, I, I would do what I did with my little girl. I would just look at her and be like, and that was it. My mom was different. She would throw the chancla, like, like she would, <laughs> like she'd grab her, like literally, like I'd be running, cutting corners, and then like she had this thing where she could make that thing just like turn corners with it and just like, <laughs> bam. Anybody have a parent like that? Like, wow. Like you, when, you, when you went to the store, you knew you did not ask for anything. You just walked in like this. And I would walk by the cereal aisle, and I'm like, mm. and my mom would be like, no empieces. <laughs> and she'd get, oh, you know that look. That's, okay, well, this little girl was like, ah, it's okay, sweetie, it's okay. I'm like, oh, my God, how you, Jesus. Girl, you got it easy. <laughs> but let me tell you something. But I believe that the first cry of Jesus is so powerful that it proceeds to this day. That cry, when it went out on, 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 his, on his birth, on, 
this day that we celebrate his, his, his birthday, I bet you that cry still precedes us to this day, and it's so powerful. And I love it because when you're at your, at your lowest part of life, like the manger, the lowest part of life, like how, how, how worse can it get than being born in a manger where animals come and lay? But God, God so loved us and wanted us, wanted us to have access to him. And then today, if you're going through something, do you know that when you cry, when you cry out to the Father, it's not that he's listening to your cry or your cry or your cry, but he hears the one crying inside of you who is Jesus. And he responds to that cry. He responds to the cry of the son. But now I get it. You know why? Because Jesus said, I no longer leave you orphans. He says, I adopt you into my family. You are now all sons and daughters. Isn't that awesome? The cry. Last verse. You got to finish what you started, guys. 2 Corinthians 8.10, once again, Paul studied Joseph and Mary, and he says, and in this, I give advice. In other words, you can take it or leave it. Do what you want with it. But you were born for a greater purpose. He says, it is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion of what you have. And how many of us could probably say that, you know what? I started good this year, and I just kind of fell off the wagon. Well, the same desire that you had a year ago to serve God, love God, love people, come on, to reach for God's promise, to aim at the target that he's placed before you, He's saying that same desire that was in you, that readiness to finish it and complete it that was in you when you first started it, he says you need to get it back. And yes, you can't do it by yourself, but you can do it with Emmanuel, God with us. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.